close to the limit point. It gets really close to zero, right? What happens to h as you get to the limit point? It gets to zero, right? So this has type zero over zero. It's an indeterminate form. Why do we say indeterminate form? Simply because it could be different things depending on the details of how you work it out. I can't say that it's one. I can't say that it's two. It could be one, it could be two, it could be zero, it could be infinity, it could be minus infinity, it might not exist. You just don't know until you work out the details when your limit has type zero over zero. It's indeterminate. Now let me try to convince you of that with some examples. So limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over um, x squared minus 1. Tell you what, I'm going to make this an x minus 1 parentheses squared upstairs so as to not take us to the unhappy place right away. Okay, so what happens when you try to plug in 1? Exactly, undefined. Now, so I, you know, that's the, my, my first thing I try in any limit I'm faced with is to plug in the limit point and see if it works. It may or may not. This one doesn't, because if I plug in one, I get zero over zero, which is an invitation to keep working. It's not, you're not done. So what you got to do then is algebra. And what can we do? Factoring is our friend, right? So I have x minus one squared. Don't foil it out. For the reasons the, the, the lady in the front row pointed out, leave it, because we might be able to cancel it. In fact, we can, because this is what? x minus 1 times x plus 1. Aha! So we have like terms. We can reduce that, like a so. And so what we're left with is the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. This thing I just did in the red, you should be like, but that's not allowed. Because you're looking at x equals to 1. right? And when x is equal to 1, x minus 1 is 0. So didn't you just divide by 0 there? No, I didn't. This is the whole construction of the limit. It gets really, really close to 1, but it doesn't actually get to 1. When you precisely formulate the limit, it's precisely for this goal. You evaluate everything except for one itself in the limiting process. So it's totally algebraically valid to cancel those because of the way the limit's set up. This is a really subtle point. I'm now allowed to do that cancellation without qualification, whereas if it was just an algebra problem I made that cancellation, all of a sudden I have to be like, OK, well, that thing I did makes sense everywhere except when x is equal to 1. I don't have to say that. Because I'm inside the limit, I'm allowed to make this, this cancellation. OK, then what's the point? Well, now it's no longer of indeterminate type, right? Because if you plug in 1, what do you get? 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. Using the limit laws, you'll forgive me if I don't write them down. Is it OK if I don't write them down? I think you'll all understand more if I don't write them down, if I just claim I'm using them, but don't actually. You see, if I write this step, I lose all you guys, right? It's much better for me to just write this and tell you what I'm doing. Some professors would disagree, but they're wrong. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I don't know them. I can say what I want about them. So it's zero. Or as my friend Tipo Homoy Guhar Sarkar would say, zero. Sorry, it's a little Indian humor. Not too many of them on campus here. Um, <clears throat> Tipo Homoy had many annoying habits. You can have a giant courtyard. And you'd be like walking across the courtyard. And where would he be walking next to you? Like a comfortable dis distance, like, like this far? No. When Tapumoy walks with you, you got this much. And then I'd be like, Tapumoy, stop walking so close. He'd be like, but it makes me feel like I'm back in Calcutta. You know, just everyone's hemmed in. And it, it's just the feel of the city. I'm like, but I don't want to be in Calcutta. You know? <laughs> Sorry. I digress. So what would have happened if I hadn't squared this? What would have happened then? Mm. 
almost the same stuff, right? Start with, we tried to plug in 1, uh-oh, 0 over 0, right? This has type 0 over 0. Notice I have nowhere written that this is equal to 0 over 0. Would not write that. It is not true. Nothing is equal to 0 over 0. This is type 0 over 0. Anyway, so doing the factoring again, what happens this time? Yeah, we just have 1 over x plus 1. Oh, hey, this isn't so unhappy. Never mind, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> I'm actually very happy. This is 1 over 1 plus 1, otherwise known as a half. So apparently we have already learned, and I'm going to put this in quotes because I don't really like it, but 0 over 0 is equal to 0, it's equal to a half, What else is it equal to? Anything you like. That's why it's an indeterminate form. We don't know what it is until we work out the details. That's what this means. What would happen if instead of going to 1, I went to minus 1 here? Let's see, you'd still have the canceling of the x minus 1 factors, right? So through the same steps as I just did over there, I still get 1 over x plus 1. But what's the deal with that limit? That's type what? It's type 1 over 0. Now type 1 over 0, now, this terminology may not be in your book, but I think it's worth knowing. I mean, it, it helps me to communicate with calculus students. If I see a limit of type 1 over 0, that's not indeterminate. Game over. Do not pass go. That is either plus or minus infinity or does not exist. That is divergent. <laughs> yes, which is now a massive. I mean, first we picked up the matrix as a popular reference. Now we've, now we've got divergent. Waiting for them to make a movie about tensors. You guys know about that one. Maybe uh, tensor categories. Oh, the tensor category. Never before has the world seen such apoc apocalyptic horror. I don't know, whatever. Sorry. A little abstract math humor. Um, <clears throat> let us work some more examples. So my, my point there was there is... Um, a type 0 over 0 to start with, this limit does not exist because graphically 1 over x plus 1 it looks like this. That's the graph of y equals 1 over x plus 1. See, it goes to minus infinity from the right, it goes to plus infinity from the left. So this limit actually is a non-existent limit. So we'd have to add to this list does not exist as a possible value for 0 over 0 because this is type 0 over 0. You plug in minus 1. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, man. Oh, never mind. I can't add it to the list with that one. It's not a wrong example. It just doesn't help me with my list. All right, I'll stop preaching at you and do another example. Let's see here. So what you guys doing this weekend? Anything interesting? Did you hear about the Sinmark 10 closing? I know, right? It was important enough that the provost started the faculty meetings by just dispelling the rumors like, St. Mark 10 is closing and we have nothing to do with it. Like it's, it's important to clarify liberty is not part of St. Mark 10 closing. <laughs> he knows what's important to the students. We've got to get the word out there. We're not part of that. <laughs> I don't know why. It makes me sad, though. Do you know how much it costs for me to take my family to the movies at the mall? I spent like $85 to see, what was it? What did we see? What was it? Was it Minions? 
Yeah, we saw the minions in 3D because we, we had Japanese students stay with us for the summer and we were trying to take her to do fun stuff. So we just got pigeonholed into going to the movies this one night because it was raining so we couldn't go to the go-kart place. And all of a sudden, $85 to watch the minions. I mean, it's a funny movie, but it's not $85 funny. <laughs> Oh, I keep doing one. Let's do something more. Okay, so this is another um, problem, kind of standard type problem. So what happens when you plug in h equal to 0? We get square root of 2 minus square root of 2 over 0, 0 over 0. Uh oh. This means we're not done. This means we need to do algebra to resolve the limit. So here's where that algebra that you were asked to review comes into play. What you do is you kind of rationalize the numerator. So what we're going to do is 2 plus h minus square root of 2. Okay, that's fine. I'm just writing it again. And then we multiply by 1. All right? And that 1 would be undefined at the limit point. But again, the limit is defined so that it does everything except for the limit point itself. Oh, maybe that's not even, well, I, I actually, I, I take it back. This is fine anywhere. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Look, you can just, I mean, is this, this is fine even at zero. That's still one, right? Square root of two plus square root of two over square root of two plus square root of two. Actually, that's still even defined at, at, at zero. Th this is not. If I plug in zero here, that, that's zero over zero. But somehow, multiplying this by this purple one fixes it. Let's see how. So <coughs> so upstairs, we've got what? Square root of 2 plus h quantity squared. And then minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 plus h plus the square root of 2 plus h square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 quantity squared, just foiling that out, all divided by h times the square root of 2 plus h plus square root of 2. Now the whole, the whole point of multiplying by the purple one is because these terms cancel, right? And the square root of something squared is the, the radicand again. I mean, it's just whatever's inside this, the root. So this gives us the limit as h goes to 0, of uh, 2 plus h minus 2 divided by h times the square root of 2 plus h plus the square root of 2. You see what happens, though? These 2's cancel, right? And then at that point, you're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of h divided by h times the square root of 2 plus h plus the square root of 2, and then you see the h's reduce, right? They, they cancel multiplicatively, uh, these guys. Now, that doesn't leave me a 0 upstairs. It leaves me a 1, right? At this point, we are now, we have now done enough algebra that we've removed, we've resolved the indeterminacy, and now we can just plug in h equals 0. What do we get? Plug in 1 over square root of 2 plus 0 plus the square root of 2, there you have it. 1 over 2 square root of 2 is the answer. Now, I can't add that to my list. There's another thing 0 over 0 is equal to, apparently, 1 over 2 times square root of 2. 
I hope you see my point. How did I take away the two? two minus oh, two minus two is zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even zero, then you see that. Like if you plug in, if you have something like that, where you plug in a number and then it's uh, zero in the denominator, you can just do that. Is there a, if there's a zero in the numerator and a zero in the denominator, we have to keep working on it until yeah. That's what I was Anyway, we will work, work more examples next class. We're not done. One more class on limits, and then we'll be on to derivatives. Woohoo! Thank you.